Hi, so I realized at the end of the live that apparently it only recorded the first 56 seconds of the live. So this is me going through everything a second time. So for those who attended live, if it's not exactly the same as what you saw, that's why I'm redoing the, the examples and everything. Um, I'm trying to remember the examples that I did, but I'm basically starting over. So simplifying expressions. <sighs> so um, in order to learn algebra, you real into really understand it, you really under need to focus on definitions because the words tell you what to do. So that's what we're going to start with. So we're going to start with the word variable. So a variable is a letter and it can resent, represent numbers. So you think of it as a blank where you can plug numbers in and you can substitute, replace that letter with a number. A constant is something without letters. It's a fixed number. Like the numbers that we count with, those are all constants. They don't change. Two is two. It's always two. Variables can change depending on what number you replace it with. They vary, hence the name variable. And then we've got arithmetic operations. So arithmetic comes from the word arithmetic, which is spelled exactly the same. It's just pronounced differently based off of if it's a noun or an adjective. Uh, it's basically, you know, the math you learn in elementary school, adding, subtracting, that sort of thing. Some more advanced operations include exponents, uh, absolute values, square roots, but that those are considered operations. Those are things that you do to numbers to combine them and come up with another number. So putting those three words together, that gives us the definition of an algebraic expression. So this is a collection of variables and constants involving operations. So what makes it algebraic or algebra is the fact that it includes variables. Um, other, if there's no variables, it's just generally an expression, but expression can be used even for algebraic expressions. Anything's an expression. If it does not have an equal sign, it does not have less than, greater than, those kind of, oops, hit the back button, <laughs> um, those kind of symbols. So if there's no equal sign, it's an expression, it's called algebraic because there's letters involved, but it's a com combination of letters, numbers, and symbols, essentially. And there are basically two things you can do to expressions. You can either simplify or you can evaluate. Now, if you're trying to think, okay, we've got these expressions, we've got, if they don't have equal signs, what does that mean? Think of how math is a language, Math has a grammar, math has rules, and then think about your English classes. You learn your grammar in English and you have things that are called phrases and sentences. An expression is the equivalent to a phrase in English. It's an unfinished thought. In English, if you said the water basket, what about the water basket? What else is going in there? It's unfinished. There's not enough information to know what's going on. That's a phrase. Or, you know, you, it's, a, it's a fragment. It's incomplete. There's no verb. There's nothing going on there. In math, an expression is an incomplete thought. There's no verb, which is like an equal sign. Um, so there's not, it doesn't really have any meaning. You're not, there's not like an answer to it because it's not done. That's what an algebraic expression is. So you can only simplify, you can evaluate. Um, other terms, other words, term. <laughs> so this is if you have an expression, and actually let me um, write down an example of an expression 2x plus 5y. That's an expression, letters, numbers, symbols, operations. Terms are the things that are separated by the plus signs or by the operations. So this has two terms. There's a 2x and a 5y. So they're separated or between the symbols. Usually there might be more than one symbol, but those are terms. Like terms are ones that match with the variables. So they have the same variables. 
and then they also have the same exponents on those variables. That's what makes them like or similar. So in the example that I have here, 2x plus 5y, these are not similar because they're different letters. So simplifying expressions. This is what we're focusing. There are two things you can do, simplify or evaluate. We are simplifying here. The word simplify in math means to put things in as few terms as possible, and you're using the order of operations to do this. You're getting rid of parentheses. You're trying to combine things together so that you don't have as many terms. When we simplify expressions, because these are unfinished thoughts, your answer is still going to have variables in it. You're not going to get a single number because it's unfinished. Um, this is different from evaluate. If you evaluate, there's a number, there's an answer. Simplify, there isn't like a single number as your answer. Unless things happen to cancel out, most of the time they don't. So generally your answer still has variables in it. The general process of simplifying is that you need to follow the order of operations. You combine like terms as you go, and you keep going until there's nothing else to combine. That's, that's what simplifying is in one sentence. Now, behind simplifying, there are all of these rules that allow us to do what we're doing. So if you've ever wondered, well, why can I do this? Why can I do that? It's because of these properties. So there's a lot of them here. And I don't expect you to memorize the names of these properties. This is great for just like something in your notes to have as a reference. What's important is knowing how to use these and what they allow you to do. That's the important part to get from here. But these are the basic rules that all, everything is based off of in algebra. And you can see that there are groupings. So there's the commutative property and we have one for addition and one for multiplication. And if you look to the right on the symbol portion and you look at what it's saying, the commutative property says a plus b is equal to or the same as b plus a. And then with multiplication, it's just a multiplication symbol in there. The commutative property is telling us that we can change the order of addition or multiplication and our answer is the same. So instead of doing two plus four, I can do four plus two. I'm gonna get the same answer. Then we have the associative property, and we have one for addition, and we have one for multiplication. And if you look here, these are involving parentheses, and it's all about the grouping. We have A plus B grouped together, so those are done first, and then plus C. But this is the same answer if you do A plus, and then B plus C. So if you did B plus C first, and then added in A. And there's something similar for multiplication. Basically, what this is saying is that the order of addition and multiplication does not matter. The key here is addition and multiplication. This does not apply to subtraction or division. If you have subtraction, in order to use this property, you need to turn it into addition. Subtraction is actually defined as adding a negative. So if you rewrite it as adding a negative, then you can use this rule. And for multiplication, this doesn't apply to division. You can't just change the order you divide. But division is defined as multiplying by the reciprocal. So if you take a division problem and turn it into a multiplication problem, then you can use this rule. So um, you need to be very, especially with the commutative property, it's the same thing. It doesn't work with subtraction. You have to convert them. It doesn't work with division. You need to convert them into their addition and multiplication forms in order for these rules to apply. But once everything is all addition or all multiplication, then these rules hold. So that's the commutative property, the associative property. Next are the identity properties. Of course, we have one for addition and one for multiplication. So the identity property of addition is all about zero. You can add zero to something and you it doesn't do anything, your answer is the same. And the identity property for multiplication is all about one. You can multiply things by one and you still have the same thing. It doesn't change. So those are actually called the identities. There's the additive identity, which is zero, and the multiplicative identity, which is one. They're the numbers that make things identical to what you started with, not changing it. 
Then there's the inverse properties. Of course, one for addition and one for multiplication. So for addition, if you add a number and then the negative of that number, they cancel out and they go to zero. Or these are the opposite of the number if you want to use that terminology. So two plus negative two is zero. So that's the inverse of addition and they are called additive inverses. They cancel out. They cancel out to the identity of the additive identity, which is zero. The inverse property of multiplication is about things that cancel out to get to you to one, the identity of multiplication. So if you take a number and you multiply by its reciprocal, they cancel out, you get to one. So two times one half is equal to one. They cancel out one half times two is equal to one. So those are inverse properties and those are very helpful. And then we have the distributive property, which involves both addition and multiplication. And this is when you have something multiplied by something that's added. Basically, we say we distribute the outside number by the inside number. So the outside number, and let me get my pen, gets multiplied by whatever's inside the parentheses. So if you have a times b plus c, a times B plus A times C. And there's also, you can even do this in the other direction because of the commutative property. So you can have the number in the back and it's the same thing. The commutative property that says that you can reverse the order of multiplication. So that's literally what I did. I just used the commutative property to reverse the order of the multiplication so that the parentheses are first and then the multiplication. But it's the same thing, same rule. So these are the rules that allow us to do what we do in algebra. These are the basic rules for everything in algebra. Everything stems off of these basic rules. Um, if you've ever read about geometry and Euclid, all of geometry is based off of, I think it's four axioms. Euler, I think it was Euler, no, it was Euclid. Euclid, who came up with geometry, basically said, I'm gonna start with like three or four rules, and then everything else about geometry is based off of those rules. It's similar here. We have a lot more rules <laughs> than geometry does, but all of algebra boils down to this, and then we add in additional rules as needed. But this is basically what we're gonna be following. So what's important is knowing what you can do, not necessarily the, the names behind it. So steps for simplifying expressions. The key to learning math is to realize you need to learn a process. You need to learn a recipe. Think of it as each week or each section you're learning a new recipe to form a cookbook, which is algebra. And our recipe for this lesson is how to simplify expressions. So this, these are the steps and everything I'm going to do is following these steps so you can see, oh, follow this recipe. This is what I do every time. Because math is something where you, there's an infinite number of combinations of letters and numbers and symbols and everything like that. There's no possible way that I can show you every single example that you might see in your life. But you have the recipe for it. And as long as you follow the recipe, you can do it. So here's how we simplify expressions. So step one is to rewrite the expression. And this first step is usually skipped once you get really good at algebra, um, but I don't recommend skipping it at all during this course because it forms the basics of everything. And this is actually, this first step eliminates a lot of common errors that happens with negative signs. So I strongly recommend doing this first step. So you turn all of your subtractions into adding a negative. So if you saw something like two minus five, you can instead write that as two plus negative five. Those are the same thing. So we do this because then we turn all those subtractions into adding and then all we have is addition and we can use those properties for addition. The next thing you do is if you have any variables that don't have numbers, you write a one in front of them. So if you see like the letter A, you now write one A because you do literally have one A there. And that will allow us to add our numbers together. 
Then if there are any negative signs in front of parentheses, you turn those into negative ones. So if you have like a negative times 2x plus 5, instead you can write that as negative 1 times 2x plus 5. So you can see we're multiplying a negative 1, not just a negative. A lot of times we won't write a 1 because it's if you're multiplying by 1 it doesn't do anything, so it's just assumed to be there. But writing it there when you're learning algebra can be very helpful. So your first step is to rewrite basically any, anything that has a minus sign and then any variables that don't have numbers. Then step two is to do the distributive property. And you keep doing the distributive property until you've gotten rid of all parentheses and brackets. Um, you can do, like if you have lots of distributive properties, like they're embedded, you can kind of do steps two through four and then cycle through, sort of like, if you, if you know anything about programming, you can think of it as like a for loop, like you do it, or, or a while loop. While you have the distributive property, you do that multiplication, division, addition, and then, oh, there's still more things for distributive property, go back and do it again. So you can cycle through those things what I'm going to do today is not the cycle process. I'm going to just do all of the distributives at step two, do everything at once, and just do it all in one, you know, linear fashion versus doing a loop. But you may find that the loop process where you repeat steps two, three, and four until you're done and keep cycling through may be more effective for you. So I just want to warn you ahead of time that that is completely valid and you can do it that way. So that's step two, do the distributive property. Step three is then you do any multiplication and divisions that you have. Generally, the way that we're writing this, we're only going to have multiplications to do. And you always go left to right, just like we're reading, you go left to right. And then you do any addition and subtractions, but because we're writing all subtractions as adding a negative, they're only gonna be addition. So you just add everything together that, you, that are like terms and you go left to right. And then that will be it. So if you follow these steps, you do exactly what I've written, that then you'll be you'll you'll be done. So there are some important notes here. So I already mentioned this, it's impossible to give you every single possible combination you will see. So you're just going to get a sample of what you might see. And the key, as I mentioned before, is learning the process. So you want to focus on the steps and the process. Focus on that recipe that I'm talking about, that, that recipe card. Like, I, I'm envisioning like a note card, you know. <laughs> focus on that because that's your key to algebra. Don't focus on what each math thing looks like because you're not going to get every possible example. And in real life, we you need to be able to take your knowledge and apply it in new novel situations. That's something that you need to do on the job, is you might get a new situation that you've never seen before, you need to take, what do I know? What can I apply to this situation? That's what math is all about, is teaching you how to take what you know and apply it in novel situations. So I often hear students say, the questions on the quiz were nothing like what I had on the homework. Well. You may not see the exact same problem you saw on the homework. So in that aspect, yes, you didn't see this exact same problem. But it's actually not nothing like you saw on the homework because you're doing the same steps. You were just testing, can you apply this now that you've had practice on the homework? Can you apply this in a novel situation? Because that's the skill that we want you to learn in college. and in algebra is being able to take what you know and apply it in a new situation. And that's one of the reasons why math is a required course is because this is a skill that everybody needs to know how to do no matter what your major is. So on the quizzes, it's all about applying what you just learned in a new situation. So you need to focus on the steps in the process. That's the key to being successful. So that said, I'm going to go over 
a series of examples. I have more examples here than I have time to go over. The ones that I don't go over in this PowerPoint, I'm gonna put the answer on in the bottom right corner. And I challenge you to try to do it on your own following the recipe and then see if you get the answer that I have. So that is my challenge to you. So this first example is I'm going to show every single step for this first example. Every step, I'm going to use those properties to show you exactly why we can do what we're doing. But in reality, we don't usually show every single step here. But I'm just going to show you so you can see why we can do what we do based off of those properties. So we have simplify negative 9a plus a minus b plus 5a. When you're taking notes, don't just write down the math part. Write down the word simplify too because those are the directions. Simplify is telling you what to do. It's saying, okay, I need to look for my recipe cards that have the word simplify. And then you may have different recipe cards based off of what you're simplifying and you look, okay, what do I have? There's no equal sign. It's an expression. So now I need to find my recipe card that says simplifying expressions. So you need to look at it as a, as a whole. The word is just as important and the, as the actual math that you're seeing. So you have to write those down because that's telling you what to do tells you where to go. And I recommend having a binder for this class or a series of note cards, whatever works for you. But I recommend having a section where you just put your recipe cards. Here's how I do this. Here's how I do this. Here's how I do this. And I recommend another section just for the definitions. So that way, if you're like, oh, I don't remember what simplify means, you can look it up. And some of these recipe cards, you'll have to figure out what the recipe is based off of the examples you see. Look for the patterns. What are they doing every single time? And you can write your own recipe card. You're not going to be given every single recipe. So that's an important part for your notes. That way, when you get to the quizzes, which are open book, open notes, you have your notes organized so you know what section to go to, you know what you're looking up, you know what recipe to follow. The thing about open note, open book um, quizzes is that you can't expect them to necessarily be easier because you have your notes. You need to know how to use your notes. You still need to know what to do. You know, we are testing. Can you apply this in a new situation? So you still need to study. You can't just say open book, open notes. I don't need to study. Mm -mm. It's not like a history book where you just look it up in the book and you just like find in the ebook. You still have to understand the process of what's going on. So. You still need to study, you need to have your notes organized, so I recommend having your recipes in one section, your definitions in another section, maybe examples in a third section, what works for you. So back to this problem, I'm going to go every single step and watch how I take notes because this is also how you should be taking notes so that way you can see the recipe in play every single step of the way. So step one, rewrite. And so you can go back to your recipe and say, okay, these are all the things. I'm turning all of my subtractions into adding a negative. I'm writing a one in front of anything that doesn't have a number. And then if I have things with parentheses, which we don't have in this first example, um, and there's a negative in front, you turn into a negative one. So, and I like to color code and I strongly recommend color coding. So I have a negative 9a plus a. So there's no number in front of the a, so I'm going to write 1a. Then I have a minus, so I'm writing that as adding a negative. And then I have a b without a number, so that becomes 1b and then plus 5. So I do this so that I have everything as addition so I can use the addition properties. This also eliminates errors that commonly happen with negative signs. So if you are someone that tends to mess up negative signs, you need to do this because it will save your butt. <laughs> so that is step one. Step two is the distributive property. And that involves parentheses. 
We do not have any parentheses here, so this is not applicable. So I'm going to just write that because it's still part of the recipe. We just don't have to do that step. We can skip it. It's like if you are cooking something and you're told to chop something, but and this actually happens, I, I get food kits will be told to chop mangoes, but it actually comes pre-chopped for us. So it's like, oh, okay, so I just skip that and move on to the next thing. Step three is multiplication and division. Generally, it's just multiplication. And we don't have any multiplication going on here, so this is also not applicable. This usually the distributive and the multiplication, those go together. So if you have distributive, you have multiplication, um, they're just generally hand in hand. And then the addition, and this is the bulk of what's going to happen. So I'm going to show way more steps than, <laughs> you know, I would normally, and that you would normally, but so you can see the properties at hand. So we want to group things together. We let's look at what are like terms. So I'm going to kind of underline. I have things with the letter A. Everything with a letter A is a like term. So I have three things with the letter A. And then I have things with the letter B. There is one thing with the letter B. So it doesn't have anything else that's similar to it. So I have two different colors here. That means when I simplify, I'm going to have two things when I'm done because there's two different colors. Now I want to group the things in yellow together because they go together, but I have my 5a separated out by this negative 1b. The yellows are not quite together, so I want to flip-flop my negative 1b and my 5a. I want to flip-flop where they are so that I have all my yellows together. By flip-flopping, that's the commutative property of addition, but allowing me to flip-flop those. So that is my first step. So I have negative 9a plus 1a, and then I'm going to put the 5a so that all my a's are together, and then plus negative 1b. And that is the commutative property of addition. But I basically abbreviate it as commutative property. So this tells me that I've got all of my yellows together, all the a's together, and then I've got my B together. So you can see now I've got two groupings. So I need to add together everything with my A's. So the way that if I'm showing and I'm using these properties, I'm going to do the distributive property in reverse. So if I go back to my property thing, oops, one more. I'm basically, I have the right side of the distributive property. I have things that are multiplied because I have a number with a letter. Those are implied multiplication. That's like if 2a is 2 times a. So I'm going to do the opposite and turn it into something with parentheses. And I'm going to use the form that I wrote down here where I have the letter in the back and then things in parentheses and those are going to be the numbers in front. So we are basically, we're using the distributive property in reverse. So in parentheses are all these numbers, negative nine plus one plus five, and then A. If I just kind of pulled the A out, it was multiplied by all the numbers. Now I'm undoing it. And then I have this plus negative one B. So that is using the distributive property. Now I can do my addition because I've got my numbers grouped together. I can add those and we add it left to right. So negative one or negative nine plus one is negative eight. So I have negative eight plus five in parentheses times a plus negative one b. So that is just addition. And then I'm still adding left to right. Negative eight plus five is negative three. And when you get a single number in parentheses, you can remove it from the parentheses. So that gives us negative 3a plus negative 1b. So again, we did addition again. And then 
these are two separate terms. I have the A's and the B's. Combined those, I have two terms left over. This is as far as we can go because A's and B's are different. We can't add them together. So you can leave this as your answer or you can take all of your adding as negatives and make them back subtractions. You can remove the ones from any variables. And so you can write this as negative 3A minus B and basically undo the rewriting that we did. So this is using all of those properties and technically turning that one B into a B is just using this identity property right here. Is that if you see A, you can write it as one times A. That's, that's essentially what we're doing here. And so we're just kind of undoing that. That's yet again, another property. But this is, we don't normally show every single one of these steps. Basically, we'll, we might rewrite it, so we might do that first step, but then we'll pretty much skip the, dis, the step where you're kind of undoing the distributive property, and then we'll do all of the, di, the addition in one instead of doing two at a time, you know, like that. So sometimes we even skip the bottom one and just go negative 3a minus b. We don't normally write all of those steps. But if you're wondering, well, why am I allowed to do this? It's because we're following those rules that we put into place saying, this is how algebra works. These are the rules that we're going to follow. Everybody's following the same rules. When you follow these rules, everybody gets the same answer. So this is our recipe demonstrated. So let's move on to a second example. And I'm not going to show the demonstration of every rule. I'm going to do it more conventionally like we do. But I'm still going to show the recipe. So step one is to rewrite. So I've got 6q. And then I have a minus that gets turned into adding a negative. So I have, then I have 9 plus 3q squared. Another minus sign is adding a negative. q squared plus 10. So I just rewrote everything. And actually, I have a q squared there. I need to put in a 1. So I'm going to slide that 1 in there. So if you forget, you can always slide that back in. So that's step one. Step two is the distributive property, which usually we can just write as distribute. We have no parentheses, so that is not applicable. Step three is any multiplication. And because we did not distribute, we also have no multiplication. So that is also not applicable. So we go to our addition step. And so I'm going to start by rearranging my like terms. And so I'm going to start by color coding. So I have a 6q. I don't really have anything else with a single q. So there are things that have q, but they have q squared. So they have exponents on them. So they're not like terms with the q because one is a Q, one's Q squared. If you say it out loud, Q and Q squared, different things. Then I have a constant, negative nine, and then I have another constant, 10. And then I've got a three Q squared and a negative one Q squared. So I've got three different colors that I used here, which means this is going to simplify to three things. So I'm going to rearrange these so that things are grouped together. And you generally put the things with the highest exponents first, and you usually put the numbers last. That's just convention. And if you have more than one letter, we usually go in alphabetical order. It's just the rules of what we do. So I'm gonna put my Q squareds first. So three Q squared plus negative one Q squared. Now I'm going to do my Q, so plus 6Q, and then my numbers, plus negative 9 plus 10. And then I'm going to just show 
that I can group these things together based off of their like terms. And this gives me three groupings. So when I simplify, I'm gonna get three terms. So now I'm actually going to do the addition. And so when you do the addition step, ignore the variable part, just add the numbers. The variables just hang out. They just, they don't, they sit there. It's like, I'm, I'm think of the mental math video where we were doing fractions. One third plus two thirds is three thirds. One Q plus two Q is three Q. One Q squared plus two Q squared is three Q squared. That just hangs out, we just add the numbers. So I have three Q squared plus negative one Q squared. Three plus negative one is two, so this gives me two Q squared. And watch how I'm aligning this. Everything's working vertically and I'm putting my things underneath what I added together so that you can kind of see what matches and it allows you to check your work easily. Then I've got six Q and then negative nine plus 10 is one. So I have two Q squared plus six Q plus one. There is no adding negatives to rewrite. There's no one times a variable. So this is just our answer. So we're following a recipe. Let's do one with um, parentheses. Here we go. So we have a negative parenthesis 2y plus 7 parenthesis minus 4 plus 3y. Same recipe. Step one, rewrite. So that negative in front of the parentheses, there's no number there. So that's going to be a negative one. If there's a number, if there's no number and you have like a sign a symbol, you can always put a one there. So that's going to be a negative one. Then we have two y plus seven. And then I have a minus four. That minus turns into adding a negative. And then I have four and then three y. We don't worry about like terms until we get to the addition steps. So step two is going to be the distributive property. What should we say we distribute? So this is multiplying the thing outside of the parentheses by what's inside the parentheses. And sometimes it kind of helps to color code. We have a negative one times a two y, negative one times two y. And then you always separate these out with plus signs. So I've got that plus sign. And then we have a negative one times seven. So I'm just color coding so you can see what the distributive property basically created two terms there. That negative one got multiplied by everything in the parentheses. And then once you hit the end of the parentheses, you stop multiplying. And then we copy everything else down. So I've got plus negative four plus three y. So that's the distribute step, the distributive property. Then we need to multiply. So that's step three. These always come in tandem. And when we multiply, we multiply the numbers because multiplying with a variable doesn't really mean anything. So we multiply the numbers. So I have a negative one times two y, I do negative one times two. And the reason for that is the associative property where you can rearrange the, the parentheses. So instead of having the parentheses around two y, you can put them around the negative one times two and I can multiply those. So that gives me negative two y and then I have a negative one times seven. So that's negative seven plus negative four plus three y. Again, notice how I'm lining things up so that it's easy to follow. And then when you're looking at your work, you can see what's going on. So now we've multiplied everything. We don't have anything else left but addition. So now we want to identify the like terms. So 
I have something with a Y and something else with a Y. And then I've got something, a number, a constant, and another constant. So we have two colors here. We're going to get two terms. And I'm going to rearrange them so that I have my Y's together and then the numbers together. So I have negative 2Y plus 3Y and then negative 7 plus negative 4. And so my y's are together and my numbers are together. And now we're going to add to these. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1, so I get a 1y plus negative 7 plus negative 4 is negative 11. So I have 1y plus negative 11. And then if you want to rewrite this, if we have a single y, we just usually write the letter. And then plus a negative is the same as subtraction. So this is the same as y minus 11. So this is our recipe. We rewrote it. We did the distributive property. We multiplied and then we added. So now the next one that I think I did, this is the one that I did next. Nope, not this one. This one, okay. So multiple sets of parentheses. And we have brackets. So we work inside out and we've got fractions, lots of things going on here. But the rules are all the same. So step one is to rewrite. Now brackets, parentheses, sometimes you see curly braces, those all mean the same thing. They're just ways of grouping things together. We usually will use parentheses first, then brackets and then curly braces. And we usually work inside out. So you simplify the innermost so the parentheses first, then you simplify any brackets, and then you simplify any curly braces, you work inside out. So first we're going to rewrite. So I have a negative three, and then a bracket, and then a three, and then a parenthesis. Then I have a B, and I'm gonna turn that into a one B. Then a minus, which adds, we're gonna turn that into adding a negative, and then two thirds, close parenthesis. Another minus, adding a negative, and then we have two, parenthesis, another b without a number, so that's one b, plus four, close parenthesis, another minus, that's adding a negative, and then six b squared, and then close the bracket. So we just rewrote it. Now we're going to do the distributive property. So this because we have more than one set of grouping symbols, we have parentheses and then brackets. This is where you have a choice. You can follow the recipe exactly as it says and do all the distributing at once. Or you can do the cycle where you do one set of distributing, then you multiply, add, then you do this set of distributing again, multiply, add, and you keep cycling through until there's no more distributing left. I'm going to just do straight exactly as written. So I'm going to do the first set, the inside set with the parentheses. And then when we finish that, then I'll do the outside step. But as you get familiar with this, you can choose what works best for you and your brain. So inside step, I'm going to do the three times the one B. And so I'm not doing anything with this negative three and the bracket. So I'm going to actually, I know this is going to take up a lot of space, so I'm going to move it over. So I can still write that negative 3 with the bracket there. So I'm not doing anything with those, but then I'm doing 3 times 1b. So I'm just writing that down. And then my plus sign. And then I'm going to take this 3 and multiply it by the negative 2 thirds. Now when you get really good at this, you can do that multiplication in your head and kind of skip the step where you're writing it down. But, oops, I should have done that in my color coding. Let me 
fix this. Um, but I don't recommend taking shortcuts until you are very confident. Until you feel extremely confident, write everything down, don't take shortcuts. Okay, so we hit the end of the parentheses, then I have this plus, and now I have another set of distributing that's going on. Let me do this in a different color. Negative two times one B. and then a plus. And color coding is nice because then it helps you check your mistakes because you're like, okay, this green is coming from the green distributor and let me double check that I multiplied stuff correctly. Then we have a negative two times four and then I hit the end of the parentheses so I'm done there. And then a plus negative six B squared and then bracket. So that's one set of distributing now we have the next set of distributing. So if we're doing it all in one step and not looping around, then I need to multiply the negative three all the way through. Now some people at this point like to multiply this stuff out, add like terms, and then multiply the negative three. And that's the loop process. But I'm just following strictly the recipe. So I'm going to take another color now um, let's do yellow. So I'm going to take this negative 3 and multiply it by the 3 times 1b. So that's negative 3, 3, and 1b. So all of that multiplication you can put in parentheses. We generally don't bother with the first number, we'll put the rest in parentheses. And then negative three times the second thing. So it's negative three times three times negative two thirds. I'm probably gonna run out of room here. Then we have negative three times the negative two times one B. And notice that I do the arrow each time. That kind of helps me keep track of where I'm at so that you don't lose things plus negative three times the negative two times the negative four plus, I might be able to squeeze this in. And then the negative three times the negative six B squared, ah, just made it. <laughs> so, this, this is the step, this is what happens if you do all the distributing all at once. So if you're following the strict recipe, this is what you would do. If you do the loop thing, you would multiply, simplify, then distribute again. So it's up to what works for you, where you find the least mistakes. If you find fewer mistakes with this process, great. If you find fewer mistakes simplifying inside and then distributing again, that's totally fine. So our recipe says that next we multiply. So now we're gonna multiply all of our number portions together. So I have a negative three times a three times a one. So you can just use your calculator, put that all together, could do negative nine B. Then I have negative three times three times negative two thirds. So I recommend having a calculator that does fractions that way you don't have to worry about that. Just have a calculator that can do fractions. Um, I've got one right here. This actually can do fractions. There's um, a little in yellow here above it. There is the Desmos Scientific Calculator that does fractions. So if you use those, then you don't have fractions. You know, people freak out, they make mistakes. It's better to use that. Um, I'm gonna do it mentally though. So I've got a negative three times three, which is negative nine, times negative two, which is positive 18, divided by three, this is gonna give me a six. And notice how I'm lining things up, so that way it's easier to check your work, because you can see, okay, the six came from what was right above it. Then I have negative three times negative two times one, so that gives me six B. 
then negative 3 times negative 2 times negative 4, 6 times negative 4, negative 24. Oh, I wrote an extra negative sign. And I only caught that because since I the first recording didn't go, I was like, wait a minute, I thought this came out as a positive 24. But see, you can check your answer because I can look back and I looked back and I'm like, oh, wait, but above that I had a positive 4. So, double check your, everybody can make sign errors. Then I have a negative three times a negative six, so that is a positive 18 B squared. All right, so everything's multiplied together. Now we can do the addition step. And so now I'm gonna go back to my color coding. So I have things with Bs and then I have the number 6 and 24 together and then I have a b squared so that is doesn't have anything else that matches to because it's a b squared not a regular b so I'm gonna rearrange these I'm gonna put the b squared first so 18 b squared then I'm gonna put the b parts together neg plus negative 9b plus 6b, always separate by plus signs. And then I'm going to put the numbers together, plus 6 plus 24. So again, I'm just going to color code so that you can see the groupings and that we're going to end up with three terms in our final answer when we simplify. So I get 18b squared, negative nine plus six is negative three b, plus six plus 24 is 30. So I don't have any more room on my screen to rewrite that as a minus three b, but you can. Otherwise you can leave it as 18b squared plus negative three b plus 30. So the, that's all the examples that I went through in the live. The other ones that I have on here, I'm gonna put the answers on um, so you can test it out yourself to see if you get the same answers. If you run into any issues, you can email me, you can go to tutor.com and you know share them the, a picture of this and say, where did I go wrong? Here's my work, you know, whatever works for you, you can get some help on that. So hopefully this is helpful and I'll see you guys at the next live.